ranges with, with that kind of data format. And this is pretty much all the module. It's just detecting that the hue is in, in a certain range. So hue is actually a circle. It's the color wheel, basically. So like at the top is red. Um, so it's 0 degrees, uh, plus or minus 15, we'll say. And then the saturation has to be so much, because you don't want it too gray, or else it like, will attack the wall. <laughs> and uh, luminosity just has to be bright enough. So that's, that's it. And then you just, so just summing up all the matches, and just if the matches is over a threshold, then it will just attack it. So that's all there is to this. Um, so right, let's do something with that. Uh, so first of all, I'll go to my projects directory, and I will make a new directory. So we'll call this, uh, what do you guys want to call this? Um, you call it detector. 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 detector might work. I don't know if that's on NPM already, but we'll call it detector, sure. Like this. Or, or any fancy spellings or anything. Oh, here's, here's one trick. Just as a brief aside. If you're having trouble thinking up names for modules, which you do, like, because there are 16,000, so there's a lot of stuff. So on Linux, and I'm sure you can get this easily um, on Mac or whatever. Um, there's user share dict words. Yeah, there we go. So I do this a lot, and there's also this cool program called WordNet. So like if you do detect and look for synonyms, whoops. Oh yeah, and I just use a shell script to wrap around this, so I don't really use the command itself too much. Whatever, I have a shell script. <laughs> I have a shell script. Detect. So this is all the synonyms of detect. Observe, find, discover, notice, spy, cite. Those are all great. But we'll just call it... Um, Put a hue in there, dude. Hue detector. That's cool. Yeah. Or uh, you can, like, hue, like the British. <laughs> <laughs> hue detector. Detective hue? I don't know. Hue detector. I like that. We'll go, we'll go with it. So, uh, here we have a... It's empty, right? That's good. Start, start with emptiness. Um, if you're going to rip stuff out, you can always do that from an empty directory. So, we'll just copy lib uh, detect.js into hue detector. <laughs> Pretty sure that's not taken on NPM, so, that, so we want to keep that up. And cool. And now we're just in Hue Detector. So we'll, uh, I like to just call it index.js for no reason because it doesn't matter. Um, anyway, so here's that file we just wrote. Um, oh, yeah, we need to like copy. Instead of, you know, you can NPM install these, but I'll just copy it from the project directory. So manager copter, go to modules. Dot. Okay. Wow, that actually takes quite a lot. Just copy directories in my disk. Anyways, so now we have an index.js. So what are the next steps? I mean, we have some code. We ripped it from somewhere. Um, now we actually need to start. Well, it'd be nice if we kind of had an example of it. That's a good place to start, and then I'll, I'll build on that a little bit. So we have an example. Um, let's see. Our module takes a width, a height, and a buff. So. <coughs> We can call it a uh, detect.js, and we'll, we'll do um, q equals require.dot slash show in the parent, which has an index.js, which is nice actually because you don't have to have your package JSON first. You can make that at the end when you're about to publish. Um, we'll do a q, uh, the width and the height. I don't know, just make some something up and a buffer, whatever, and like pair buff equals. Uh, I guess we'll read that from a file. How about so fs.read files. And then we can get that from process RP. Cool. And that. So uh, this module actually just returns a Boolean. So var detected equals. And we'll console that through that. Make sense? OK, cool. And if I mess this up, I have an actual example somewhere that I can just pretend like I wrote that in the first place. OK, so we have an example. Um, so we need some image data. So let's do that. <laughs> right? Come on, faster. <laughs> okay, still computer, still. Anyways, so here I am. Hello. Um, let's take photo. There we go. Three, two, one. Let me see thing. Okay, now let's take a photo with some editing. That should be good. Okay. No. <laughs> Okay, cool. So we have this image data. So uh, Linux puts it in this weird, stupid place. Okay, I'm just copy these over to the example directory and back. Oh, yeah. Cool. 
So, pop a new example, and now we actually need to look at these to figure out which one is the one that's... Okay, so the first one is... Mm, ha! Two. Okay. <laughs> um, so that one's red, zero, dot, jpeg. And we'll move the other one to be um, not red, zero, dot, jpeg. So if we want to put some more data for our test, we can do that. Okay, cool. And I'll just verify it. So sweet. And uh, we need to look at what size that is. So, okay, so we can actually use the correct size instead of this made up thing. Um, so it's 1280, 720, I guess is my webcam resolution. Okay, cool. So if we just run node detect with red, let's see if it works. I have no idea. Okay, whoa, it detected the first one is true. Let's see if it detects the next one is false. Or if we'll have to tweak it. True, also true. Okay, so there's something I missed here. I actually know what it is already. Um, so it's just the threshold value is not scaled to the width and the height. Um, so if we just like console dir what's going on here, we'll see. Okay, so that's the not red one. Oh, and the red one has, wait, did, we, did, did I get that backwards? Yeah. Oh, I did. Good, good on you. So that's, um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's call that not red zero zero so I don't have to. Ah. And then not red zero can be red zero zero. Okay, so uh, I guess the first thing that we should do is actually scale the matches to the width and the height. So I have no idea. Uh, we'll just divide by. Um, well, here's a cool thing we can do. So we'll, we'll console do the matches, right? And we can also console dirt what the width times the height is, because maybe there's some little algorithmic property we can exploit in this particular case. Ah! Oh, yes. Good job, dude. Good job. Okay. So that one, these should be the same size. Um, so now we can work backwards and do 1426, or 14269, uh, divided by the first thing. That, that makes sense, right? So that's like uh, 3%, and then 862 divided by the same thing is like less than 1%. So. You're thrashing your height variable. What's that? You're thrashing your height variable. Thrashing my height variable. You're over a bit. Oh! Oh, you. That's good. Yeah, okay. Let's fix that also. Yeah, great. Good on you, Roman. I like this. Audience participation. Most constructive possible way. Uh, where are we? Uh, with, with, with. Okay, let's do that again. Two lines up and use H and Yeah, that's the hue. So it's, it's like. Oh, huh. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so that's true. Oh, maybe that was. No, that, that shouldn't be a bug because it was working for the other thing. Okay. But it's a different value. It's actually divided by um, 921600. So the first one is that, and then 14, 2, 6, 9 is like, okay, so how about if matches divided by width times height is greater than, well, divided by the quantity width times height is greater than 0 0.01, how about, or a little less than that? Working backwards, okay, true, good, false. Okay, so from our image data that we just got just now, we now have this, this working code. Um, but it's just an example file, right? So we're, we're aiming towards making a reusable module, right? So what I usually do is I make their test and I do this. This is the best trick ever. So if you just copy that into your test directory, you can just add a couple of things and you have a unit test. So, um, so I'll just like hard code these. Um, so we'll, we'll need to do like a testing thing. I like tap. You can use whatever you want. I don't, I don't that's not important. So I'll just add fair test equals required tap that test. And well, first of all, I need to make sure that it's been installed. So and I'll just actually link my local version because network, I like demos, don't cooperate. Okay, so we have tap and fair test is that. And now we'll do test. Detect red. 
and we'll re-embed stuff from our example into the console during. We'll, um, we can loop over some image files. So where files equals, let's see, they're an example. So dir name dot dot slash example uh, not red zero zero dot jpeg and red dot jpeg. Okay, so we got some files and we will just assert that Right. Cool. 
And I mean, that's pretty much all that that needs to do. So the next part I like to have is just how to install it. So with npm, ah, that's annoying. With npm, and I'll next little link to that in case people discover your project and haven't ever heard of npm, which is the most amazing thing in the history of technology. With npm, do npm install Q detector. And then, what else? License. Now I see. Or come on. Come ESP on. represent. ESP. Yeah. Okay. So cool. And git add readme. <laughs> git commit. Docs. Awesome. We're almost there. So the next thing we need to do is um, you could do npm init. I have a little thing that's on npm called package init. I just like it, but you don't have to. Anyways, so the description. Uh, I don't like writing things again, so I'll just like rip this from the readme. Because I already figured that value out. I don't want to ever have to think of what the description is ever again. Okay. Entry point. Yes. Keywords. Um, red. Matador. Computer vision. Computer vision. Uh, color. Sound good? Big data. Canvas. 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 <laughs> Big data. Okay. <laughs> so now it, it made a nice little package JSON and a license for us. Um, I need to actually. Well, the license says MIT, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Oh, but now they're now they're in Discord, and like some some guy at Yahoo will get mad at me like that happened last time. My licenses weren't quite. Anyways, <laughs> that happens. Okay. So the other thing is uh, now we just need to change the dependencies to be correct. So my little script actually already added added tap. Um, so what are the dependencies? I don't know, ls new models, okay. Oh geez, so that's not needed, that's needed, that's not needed. Um, oh, this, this also works, rep require index.js. So canvas and color shipper seem to be the only two that we actually need. And the rest are dev dependencies. So, what version is canvas? Head, node modules, canvas, package JSON, being like more strict is better, I found, than less strict because then module authors will break your code for you. How nice of them. And the awesome thing about NPM is it's really easy to be just really strict about everything ever. So we're going to color convert, and that's uh, 0, 3, 1. And okay, so now actually, if we do NPM test, because we have the scripts field in our, in our package JSON, cool. So that's a thing. And we'll commit this package.json and what else. Sweet. So we're almost ready. Um, actually, we are ready to put this on GitHub. So git remote add origin git add github.com colon substack detector.git git push origin master. So we'll go to GitHub. Oh, this part could be screwy. Um, oh, sweet. The network is awesome. That could have gone terribly wrong. New repository. You detector. Is that something I for? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bam! It's on GitHub. But that's not all. Um, so the next thing is let's put some unit tests, or let's put this in Travis CI, because then like we won't ever have to think about things ever again. So git add the Travis thingy. I have this, this, this package on npm called Travisify, and so you don't have to use their horrible web front end to add your projects. And it's like, well, for me personally, I have too many projects, I can't even see like about five-sixths of my projects, so it's completely not an option to use anything else. Anyways, so uh, what's cool about Travis is you can put a little badge in your markdown. So Travisify badge, and then uh, we'll get, get commit using Travis, and we'll tag it, and we'll get push over to master it with tags, and we'll do that, and then we'll get publish it, and, and npm is always the biggest thing, but now it's on npm, and if we refresh it, if we refresh it and click on this guy, then whenever Travis decides to actually run our code, then it'll be tested, cool. You're a wizard. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so that's cool. And I have some time left. How much time, you guys, do I have? Because 
That was my main thing. I have another thing though. It's super great. So you all just do some cool best friends. Yeah, so let's just do some cool shit until I get yanked off stage. Um, oh yeah, this example is really fun. Okay, so I'm actually, I haven't given this one yet. I'm going to give it uh, tomorrow, actually, in Portland, of all places. So, um, but you guys can see it first, because you're awesome. Okay, so, this one is using this crazy module by this crazy New Zealand person, uh, Dominic Tarr. It's called Scuttlebutt. It's, it's basically the most amazing thing ever. So, it's peer-to-peer -peer state replication, and it's so, so hideously easy. So basically, all you do is you require the module, like Scuttlebutt slash model is a good one. It also, so it's, it's, it uses all these crazy algorithms from crazy academics that are crazy, and it lets you just, like, have a distributed key value store, like, without thinking about it. It's, it's amazing. So you create some little models, and what's cool is you, you can, like, create streams from the models, and all you have to do is pipe them to each other. This is called, uh, it's called a duplex stream, when you pipe something into itself, and, like, there's a back and forth. It's like being on the telephone, like, oh, hello, and then you get a response, and then you just another thing. It's sort of this stateful back and forth interaction. Anyways, so you do that, and that's it. And so now, um, we can just, like, listen for updates, and uh, set a key. So here, I've set a key on, on A, and then B is going to receive the update. So I can actually run that. Oh yeah, new software. I just wrote that web thing. It's pretty sweet. Okay. So, cool. So I just ran that code and it prints out B789 from, and that's just a timestamp. But, so we set a key on A and got the value back on B, even though they're only connected via streams. What's cool about streams is that you can, you can organize streams however you want. They can be on separate, nodes entirely across the network. They could be like in a browser over HTTP or WebSockets or something. You have a lot of flexibility um, in how you can shuffle streams around. So, really amazing stuff. Um, what's cool also is that we can just, so here's, here's an example of doing, uh, using Scuttlebutt in browsers to have a peer-to-peer -peer key value store um, across multiple nodes. Basically, this is what you would use Redis for or something like that, or not at all, basically. Um, so here we can just make an HTTP server, and we'll take values as parameters. So key and value we can get from the query string, just because that's easy, and we'll get the key value when we don't set a value, and if we do set a value, then we'll actually set it. So uh, the other cool thing is we can set up a replicate URI, like CouchDB style, and like, just like this line basically is all you need to do that. Um, and you have like replication, which is amazing, I think. And then um, we can look at all the ports you give it on process RFB in order to, to set up replication. So, so let's just do that, actually. Um, ah, bigger, okay. So this one is called peer.js, so we'll run something on 8000, first of all. And then I'll run another node. Well, first of all, I can just curl to it. So curl 8000A, and it's undefined. I can set it to a value. And then I'll curl it again, and I'll get the value back. That's pretty cool. Um, but I can set up another peer, and I'll run that on 8001, and I'll connect to 8000. Now, I can curl to localhost 8000, get key A, but I can go to 8001 and also get A, and I can set things on 8001 and get them back. It's the same value on A. But there's more. I mean, this is just node-to-node -node replication, but actually, um, it's, it's completely peer-to-peer, -peer, so I can set up a, a a third server on 8002, only connect to 8001, do the same thing, so curl localhost 8002, get a key, set it to something else. Now even though 8000 isn't directly connected to 8000, or 8002 isn't directly connected to 8000, yes, it's only connected through the intermediary of 8000, that doesn't matter because it's just connected, this happened, and now it's, the keys and the values just know where to go, it's, it's amazing. What if um, you kill 8001? What if I kill it? Well, then I won't get updates um, in between. But you can actually set up uh, redundancy through the system, and it knows how to cope with that. So you can totally do fancy things. Um, one fancy thing is you can run this in browsers. So here, um, I can use uh, this module shoe I have to just create streaming APIs in the browser. So you just call this function shoe, and you get a stream. It's awesome. And um, you, you do the exact same thing with shoe that you do in 
in backend code, you just like model.createStream, and now everything's connected. It's great. And then you just do another thing to install it onto your server, and that's kind of hacky, but whatever. It's just one line. Okay, so uh, we can just change our, our server to do like static serving, just hackersly. But here's the browser part. So the browser code, if you know, looks exactly the same as the server code because it's peer to peer. We're using Browserify to run Scuttlebutt in the browser because it's just this pure algorithmic model. It doesn't have IO baked into it. So we run this code. We set up a stream just by calling shoot, and then we just do exactly the same thing that we've been doing. We create this duplex stream between different sides of the connection, and you do all this kind of stuff. We can make it so that uh, now instead of uh, console logging updates, we can actually make div elements on the page. So, and also, um, that'll set the key. And so another thing we can do is actually set elements in the page and have it have it like replicate back to our backend model. So here, this adds a, an event listener for key down. So when we hit the enter key, then that will set keys and values in, and it's awesome. So let's run that. Kill things. Okay, so this is run three. So that just used Browserify to build this stuff, and now it's running two web servers: one on localhost 8005, and one on localhost 8006. And as you'll note, they're empty because there, there's nothing in the API to actually create keys. So we use curl. So curl localhost 8005 zzz is 20. And cool. There's now a text box that's z, and it's 20. That's pretty cool. But what's really neat is we can set it to something else in browsers. And so note that these are not the same web server. And the state is replicated automatically. And, and all you need is connectedness between like all of the nodes in your graph, and you get this key value store that just replicates, and it's eventually consistent, and it's basic, it's it's really amazing. And you can like get values on 8006, set it to something else, and cool. Or we can set up a different key, QRZ. Sweet, and there's more keys and values, and they're everywhere, and it's amazing. Anyways. So that's all that I had to talk about, and thank you guys for letting me dance around on stage here, and a happy Caps Lock Day.